Hello and welcome to Rathod's IAS. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current fights of 16th and 17th March together. So I will be showing you the PDF of uh, Hindu of Delhi edition of both 16th and 17th. And we are going to pick out the articles which are important from our examination point of view. And later on, we are going to see the dimensions as usual. And we are going to see like details and important facts regarding that so and so topic. And if possible, I will be also giving you the mains and prelims questions from that topic. Okay, so it is a way we are following, right? But the one change here is I am not using the digital board today. So from tomorrow onwards, we will be having class on the digital board. So now let us see 16th March 2024 newspaper. So we are going to see like first current fights of 16th March. So first topic here is new election commissions, uh, commissioners take charge. Supreme Court refuses to stay their appointment. So as we are talking about this election commissioners and resignation of this election commissioner and we are going to have this Lok Sabha elections and even schedule of that Lok Sabha election has been released. So there is a high chance of getting question regarding this election commission. So you have to know some dimensions, right? So let us see the dimensions. So here I am using PowerPoint to write the dimensions. If you want, you can make a note. So I will be writing in the big size so that it will be easily visible. So here this article it is about election commission of India. So this topic is very important from your polity. So polity comes under your GS paper too. So here and one more thing I want to say is actually today we can we uh, inform you that we are going to conduct a prelims test. But because of APPSC prelims, so many students are requested me to postpone that examination. Yes, because many of them, they went to AP to write this uh, APPSC prelims today. And I wish you very all the best for the students who are writing this APPSC group 1. And yes, with your request, and we are we're accepting your request actually. And we are going to postpone this examination to next Sunday. So sorry for the inconvenience for the students who are from TS. So now let us see the dimensions from this polity point of view. So you have to see like which are the constitutional provisions. So whenever you are writing answer regarding election commission of India, so try to include this article 324. So even in introduction itself, you have to write articles. So I want to give you one tip to write this prelims question. Okay, prelims questions and statements regarding prelims. So you will be getting questions from appointments, question from eligibility criteria and as well as reappointment and who is going to appoint that is the president normally right and now here select committee is in use. Okay, now CJ has been replaced with cabinet minister. So this is the issue right. So here you can get question regarding this select committee as well and as well as appointment committee okay so from this area you will be getting questions so that you can expect like some questions in your examination if you are thorough in current affairs okay so if you are thorough in current affairs at least one and a half year or one year yes you can easily expect like which questions can appear in your examination right and here you have to know like what are the challenges of this ECI and even electoral bonds is in use. So regarding this electoral bonds also ECI plays a very important role especially in what? In especially to release the data of funding of this political party and even Supreme Court is involved in that electoral bond case and even SBI bank. So from this area also you can expect question because this electoral bonds is talking about political party funding right so all these dimensions that you have to know from this article point of view clear and now let us move on to next topic so this is the first important topic in your yesterday's newspaper and one thing i want to say is in yesterday's paper and today's paper there are very little articles okay so i will complete this analysis within 45 to 50 minutes there is nothing much actually and every article is like a political article that will not fetch you anything. Okay, don't waste your time simply in reading political articles. 
so now let us move on and more the one more uh, articles that we already had our discussion are in your classes so we are not going to spend much time and you can see entire paper is filled with advertisements yes in this editorial there is one article it is regarding inflation so actually inflation data had been released so now we have we are going to see that and before seeing that we have to see like what are the important dimensions that you have to see so inflation is very important topic inflation and this topic is important from gs paper 3 under economy and this topic is important from both your prelims and also from your mains point of view from prelims and mains this topic is at most important and here actually in 2019 in 2020 and in 2022 also so questions they came directly from your inflation topic so it is very important okay and even every month and even every month you will be seeing this inflation data so many of you are having like doubt like we have to remember the figures of each and every month it is not necessary just see overall so what is happening in one year whether inflation is increasing or rising increasing or decreasing so what are the reasons for increasing and you have to see like what are the measures taken by rbi and as well as government to control this inflation and even you have to see like what are the reasons so this reason is also very important and you have to see like which are the different types and what is the impact of inflation so all these are different dimensions that you can think about this okay inflation and it is at most important okay so now let us move on so let us see the details of this topic and there is also one more editorial which is important from 16th march paper that is saint patrick day so there is a chance of getting question regarding the saint patrick day in your prelims you have to know what is that so here this is important from gs1 history point of view so from history you can get questions from authors and books especially so this kind of questions that appeared in 2018 in 2019 and even you can see like days so what is this day and you can see like freedom fighters and especially from indian freedom struggle we can expect lots and lots of questions okay so these are the some important areas that you have to prepare for your prelims okay from history point of view and even you can get questions from your timeline so now let us see the facts regarding this saint patrick's day Saint Patrick's Day 2024 in India is especially very important because this year we are celebrating 75 years of diplomatic relations between Ireland and India. So one thing which is very much clear is so this Saint Patrick's Day is related to India and Ireland relations. Okay, it is related to India and Ireland relations. So now let us see what is the Saint Patrick Day is about. So we are celebrating this Saint Patrick Day every year on seventeenth March. On seventeenth March, we are celebrating this Saint Patrick's Day, and it marks traditional death date of Saint Patrick. So actually, this Saint Patrick was the patron saint of Ireland, and the day commemorates Saint Patrick and the arrival of Christianity in Ireland, and also celebrates the heritage and culture of Irish in general. So if we're talking about India Ireland relations India and Ireland they have a rich history of political engagement and as well as people to people ties for example if you're talking about relationship between India and Ireland so we have formal diplomatic links so these formal diplomatic links so they had been started in 1947 onwards so India has an embassy in Dublin and Ireland which has an embassy in New Delhi also and if you are talking about independence movement so two countries they have similar ties in their independence movement as well so that we and ireland they are having like similarities 
and apart from that if you're talking about indian constitution so indian constitution is not original constitution i can say it is like a copied constitution from different countries so whatever the things that we liked in other countries constitution we borrowed them simply so we have some features they are borrowed from american constitution and french constitution japanese constitution australia's constitution and uk constitution right so in the same way from ireland also we got some provisions so we borrowed some provisions from this ireland so in the constitution also yes you are having some link between india and ireland so please let me know which are the constitution provisions that we borrowed from this ireland in the comment box and if you are talking about this people to people relations so relationships are strengthened after the 1985 terrorist bombing in kanishka and even indian air india aircraft of the coast of ireland so what happens so people and people ties also very good now so they are strengthening day by day and if you are talking about academic collaboration that means universities colleges etc so irish institutions they have ongoing links with more than 30 universities in india and if you are talking about the map of this ireland so this green color part which comes under the republic of ireland and here we have dublin okay so here we have indian embassy and this is atlantic ocean here and here we have english channel so these are the some important things that you have to remember and as i said about this inflation topic there is a high chance of getting your prelims and as well as mains question so please don't ignore this topic so here context says that mosby that is simply ministry of statistics and program implementation India's consumer price index CPI based inflation it was like 5.09 percentage in February 2024 okay so what happened here is in January it was like 5.1 and in February it is now 5.09 so this is sixth month into that means from last six months onwards inflation remained within the comfort zone of RBI so are we need to maintain inflation right so which committee gave the recommendations like this should be the limit that is urjit patel committee so i asked this question and many of you said the correct answer for this question that is urjit patel committee so it said that yes inflation should be maintained between 4 plus or 2 minus okay 4 plus or 2 uh, percentage that means around 2 to 6 percentage of inflation should be maintained in our country so what is the percentage 4 plus or minus 2% and if you are talking about this inflation so we are having two types of inflation that is retail inflation next one is wholesale inflation so there are different indices we are using them and we are measuring this inflation so retail inflation is measured by using the cpi consumer price index and wholesale inflation is measured by wpi that is wholesale price index so cpi it is mainly made up of six components so we are having six components and each of them you are having their own weightage in this cpi so largest component here in the cpi is food and beverages so here because of this increasing of food prices like uh, onion prices or you can take vegetable prices oil prices potato prices everything so what happens the cost of the food is increasing day by day so because of this food and beverages having the large component in the cbi that is consumer price index it is 45 percentage and other than this food and beverages so there are five important components so one is pan tobacco and intoxicants second one is clothing and footwear third one is housing fourth one is fuel and light and fifth one is miscellaneous services in this miscellaneous services we can include like health and as well as education so it is around 28 percentage so first is food and beverages and second one i can say it is miscellaneous services like education as well as health so yes people are spending a lot in this education and as well as health care right so these two are very important components and if you are talking about the cpi basket it covers a wide range of items so what are the items included in the cpi so there are like 448 items and it will be technically impossible to remember all those 448 
okay and if you are talking about urban basket so there we are including some more items like for 460 items 12 items extra in this urban basket so this large basket of goods and services they represents cost of living or the utility derived by the consumers at a given level of their income of their prices and as well as taste so if you're talking about food and beverage inflation food and beverage sector recorded an inflation rate of 5 8.66 percentage in february and in january it was like 8.3 percentage so there is increasing of food inflation and as well as beverage inflation that is the one important reason now you are seeing that is one of the important cause of inflation okay and next let us move on to newspaper once again so there is no way of seeing this ground zero so here there is one article that is election commission to announce schedule for Lok Sabha poll today that means yes in Sunday's newspaper it had been declared but we are not going to see like what is that but we are going to see like in which state we are having the simultaneous elections and next important topic here is uh, hindu wins six one infra digital media awards so nowadays the trend had been changed in upsc prelims like they are also asking questions from awards so we are not going to take any chance and we are going to discuss even this awards also okay now let us move on to the notes part so if you see the context it says that hindus project the hindus the hindu newspaper projects so they backed six awards at one infra digital media awards in south asia and times the south asia so hindu got about six awards so if we're talking about details hindu made of chennai so it is a campaign to celebrate the city and it won the gold in both best in audience engagement and even best in native advertising campaign categories and this one is chennai amaze in it is also an online cryptic cross challenge it got silver in the best audience engagement category so what is this van infra so van infra it is a global organization and it is talking about world press and its mission it is to protect the rights of journalists and publishers around the world to operate independent media so because we are concerned this independent media as a fourth state but whether please let me know this in this media is having that much independence or not so you have to see one report here so please let me know which report is talking about media and the goal it is to provide members with expertise and services to innovate and to prosper in digital world and perform their crucial role in society so these are the some important facts that you have to remember and now let us move on to next topic in yesterday's newspaper again yeah in this world page there is nothing much okay so these are the yesterday's articles which are important and apart from that i saw one article that is about multimodal transport hubs so railways plans to develop multimodal transport hubs so here this multimodal transport hubs is very important because in geography in geography you will be studying this transportation topic so in this transportation we have different ways of transportation like roadways railways waterways airways and even pipelines and now here multimodal transport system came into picture like we have this ropeways also and transit systems okay so these are the some important developments that we are seeing in this transportation and here this topic we can connect with what are the advantages what are the disadvantages and what are the challenges faced by these railways okay so this is very important and these are the very important areas right so we have to see this topic in detail and there is a high chance of getting question also from this area so now let us see the context it says that the indian railways will create mega railway terminals 
with multimodal connectivity okay so railways they are have they are going to have this multimodal connectivity in aspirational cities so actually we know that one important scheme came up by the government for the development of villages that is called as aspirational district program so in that program there was development of 112 district right so you have to know which is that scheme and which ministry is taking up of that scheme and what is the present status of that scheme so you have to think in all these dimensions okay so indian railways will create mega railway terminals with multi modal connectivity in aspirational cities in the population of more than 10 lakh across the country okay so in the population of more than 10 lakh across the country so they are having this multimodal transport hubs so now let us focus on the details of this program so this program it is part of infrastructure and this infrastructure is being developed by our prime minister okay especially under one initiative and from this initiative there is a chance of getting question so this initiative is called as विकसित भारत प्रोग्राम और विकसित भारत इनिशिएटिव सो फ्रॉम दिस विकसित भारत इनिशिएटिव सो यू कैन गेट ए क्वेश्चन फॉर श्योर सो यू हैव टू प्रिपेयर दिस टॉपिक देर इज नो चॉइस टू क्लियर योर फ्रेंड्स इफ यू वॉन्ट टू क्लियर येस यू हैव टू फोकस ऑन दिस द रेलवे बोर्ड हैज टेकन अप टास्क ऑफ एनहांसिंग द ट्रैवल एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ पैसेंजर्स एंड दिस ट्रैवल एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ पैसेंजर्स कैन बी इम्प्रूव थ्रू cleanliness of coaches and also properly maintained amenities on railway premises and even videos and pictures of staff cleaning exteriors and they'll be focusing on even toilets so actually one problem in this railways is sanitation so there will be bathrooms will be very ugly and it is like unsanitized and even whatever the areas that are present here and there so you can see the splitting is happening and there are not much sanitation is seen so in this initiative they are focusing on especially keeping exteriors and keeping interiors clean like maintaining good hygiene toilets fans and inaccessible areas so that we can develop confidence in the system so if you are maintain sanitation automatically we can reroute public from other mode of transportation towards railways for sure and these efforts they were required to be increased and sustained to achieve a quantum jump in cleanliness level so that here if you focus on this cleanliness automatically we can enhance experience of this passengers in the railways and if you are talking about this viksit bharat initiative so viksit bharat 2047 agenda it is a comprehensive vision plan so it is very important plan by our government of india and they are focusing on especially transforming india into developed nation by 2047 and it mainly marks 100th anniversary of its independence okay so by this year 2047 we are going to see the development in this railways for sure so we are going to see the transformation in this railways and the vision encompasses various aspects of development they will be focusing on the various aspects of development like economic growth social progress environmental sustainability and even from this good governance point of view as well so the soul of indian version of notion of development is emphasized to honorable prime minister sankalp of panch pran so they will be focusing on sankalp of panch pran with viksit bharat being one of them and it is of utmost importance and if we talk about four pillars of this viksit bharat so they are focusing on yuva yuva is nothing but they are focusing on youth because we are enjoying this demographic dividend and as one is we are focusing on garib that is poor because we have to achieve we have to achieve our sustainable development goal that is zero poverty and as one is mahila women women empowerment and even kisan that is farmers to increase income of farmers and even other happiness like uh, other aspects like happiness that ought to be central pursuit in this journey and without achieving happiness development has no meaning okay so the nations have developed but the people they are not happy because of lack of development so we're talking about the key focus areas of this viksit bar the first one is you're focusing on education 
like in education so we are having very important problem like lack of infrastructure so we have to enhance infrastructure so we have to increase school enrollments and we have to improve the quality of education and next one is healthcare so we have to ensure accessible and quality healthcare services for all citizens and we are focusing on technology embracing and innovating technology for nation's progress and we have to focus on infrastructure like from from uh, transportation communication urban facilities everywhere so we have to improve infrastructure and next one is agriculture like we have to modernize this farming techniques and we have to support farmers for increased productivity and we have to focus on environment like we have to implement sustainable environment practices and we have to preserve natural resources okay we have to focus on the cleaner environment okay so all these are the very important focus areas and i want to give you one main question to practice that is what does this term viksit bharat indicate this is the road map for india's pursuit of viksit bharat so try to write an answer for this question post in the comment box for the variation clear yes now let us move on to another newspaper that is today's newspaper that is sunday's newspaper and actually many students they have and a tendency like to skip the sunday's newspaper but it is not good so you can get science and technology related current affairs in this sunday's newspaper okay but one problem here is unfortunately i downloaded international edition okay so it is not like that we have to read only delhi edition or hyderabad edition so whatever edition you have you can use that so for this sunday newspaper newspaper please adjust with this international newspaper just this one edition okay so here first article is seven faced poll fest to kick off on april 19 okay so polling exercise will go on till june 1st and finally counting of votes will be happen on june 4th and we are going to have simultaneous assembly polls for different uh, states like ap odisha sikkim and arunachal pradesh and how many voters are eligible so there are about 96.8 crore elector electors they are eligible to cast their vote so out of this 1.82 crore or the first timers so you can see like 1.82 crore people they are new electorals so i heartily welcome all those new electorals okay because so they are very important because so they will be the deciding future right yes or no today's uh, children are tomorrow citizens so they are entering so they got 18 years they, they turned out 18 okay so they are the new electors and you have to take the right decision like which government should be formed okay and next topic is indian navy warship rescues 17 crew members of hijacked merchant vessel and in this event 35 pirates they surrendered so now let us zoom in so this article is important so let us zoom in and i will show you like which are the points that you have to remember so what happened so here one merchant vessel has been and pirate is nothing but hijacking so normally for aeroplanes we will be saying hijacking right so for ships whenever there is hijack it is called as pirate okay so here merchant vessel turned pirate vessel ruin so now indian navy destroyed ins kolkata through concerted action successfully successfully uh, achieved this target of retrieving this vessel and about 35 pirates they surrendered okay so here you have to know like what is the role of india so what are the things that you have to know what is the role of india and you have to see like what is this ins kolkata sorry so what is this ins kolkata you have to know and what is the role of india and you have to see especially how it is so how it is your mn based so these how it is are the reason for this hijacks okay and especially 
and especially this horn of africa is also involved in this piracy okay so here you have to see like what are the measures that we can take to stop this piracy so all these things are very important okay and you have to see even red sea and uh, different water channels you are present in this red sea also and even you have to connect this topic with israel palestine issue yes here you can see one most important topic from our environment and ecology that is report finds heavy metals near bhopal tragedy site so this article is talking about heavy metal pollution so here we have to see like what is this heavy metal pollution and actually this article is related to this uci that is union carbide india limited and this is the one of the worst industrial disaster that happened so there was isocyanide gas had been released okay in this union okay union carbide limited okay from this company okay from this industry so there was a gas risk and that led to the lots and lots of disaster and even people who are present in that area they are having some this uh, that is abnormalities whenever they are going for the giving the birth okay so we can see like lots and lots of impact that is seen so this article is at most important from your environment and ecology and even from your disaster management point of view, you can connect this topic with industrial disaster that too harsh and worst industrial disaster in india so now let us see this topic in detail so here if you see context it says that several locations which are very close vicinity to this incident that is disaster which happened so the recent study found out that there is higher concentration of heavy metals in groundwater. So in groundwater, there are higher concentration of these heavy metals. And 39 years after the Bhopal gas tragedy, according to a report submitted to National Green Tribunal. So if you see details, it says that the area is affected partially by manganese pollution. So manganese pollution is about 8.33 percentage but permissible limit that means the limit that we can accept is just 0.3 mg per liter but now it is around 8.33 percent is very very high so we're talking about heavy metal pollution it is mainly caused rivers soils environment and because of even rapidly growing of agriculture and metal industries and there is no proper waste management and heavy use of fertilizers and pesticides agriculture industrial operations land fillings mining transportation they are the primary source of heavy metals in groundwater and if even if you see like there is agriculture water runoff is seen okay so whenever there is agriculture water runoff is end up in the rivers so what happens so we will be using like lots of fertilizers herbicides pesticides they will be having this metals right so they will be discharged into the river so that what happened there will be increase in the level of this heavy metals and there is also discharge of waste water from industries and even chromium heavy metals is also seen and even especially some rivers where there is a discharge from this industries is seen directly into the rivers without proper treatment so in these areas also we can see heavy metal pollution so heavy metals they have property of long persistent in plants animals and as well as environment so if, it, if you're talking about the sources of this uh, if you're talking about the sources of this pollutant so we can divide into two types so one is natural and second one is artificial or man-made so first natural sources are like heavy metals are naturally present in our earth crust because we will be getting lots of minerals and as well as resources from our earth crust right so our earth it is a source of this heavy metals and heavy metals are present in the rocks in the form of minerals for example copper lead arsenic etc and apart from that anthropogenic sources like mining industrial and agriculture operations so they are also the anthropogenic source of heavy metals in the environment and these heavy metals are produced during mining 
and extraction of various elements etc and heavy metals they emitted into atmosphere during mining smelting and other industrial activities so they are deposited on the land by dry and wet deposition methods and even whenever there is discharge of waste waters from industries or from domestic sewage so they will also add heavy metals into the environment and even applications of uh, chemical fertilizers and combustion of fossil fuels they also leads to anthropogenic input of heavy metals in the environment okay so these are the very important uh, reasons or the sources of this heavy metals and there is also one more small article which is regarding one animal species that is also very important so in sunday's newspaper if you are seeing any animal species or plant species in news yes you can get a question regarding that and you have to prepare that topic so there is one small article that is about one cow species so this is like a dwarf cow so you can uh, see that uh, dwarf cow species in youtube and you can you can like that so especially i like that species they will be very very short okay they are called as dwarf cow so animal husbandry department plans to register ten mala kulan it is an indigenous breed so kerala animal and husbandry department which decided to conserve this dwarf cow and locally the name of this cow is ten mala kulan and to launch studies to register it as an unique indigenous breed why because so this cow comes with many distinctive features like it will be having small hump actually these cows are mainly reared by the tribal people like arippa and tenmala and they are less docile and they are basically thrive on forest based fodder only and these tribes they are having the various settlement and they are being rearing these cows for many decades and animals they have completely adopted to the local agro ecological conditions and actually here these tribes are going for rearing of their cows because they will be giving nutrient rich a2 milk but they are dwarf and they will be giving the little milk but actually they are rearing these cows for their calves and the manure they are getting from and next one here is uh, the uh, officials they have identified around 42 cows from nearby vicinities and they say that these animals they have strong build up and they also have very high immunity okay so these are the special features of that cow and now let us move on to newspaper and let us see other important articles okay yes here there are some important articles like indigenous drug developed to treat sickle cell disease so this article is very important and you have to see what is a sickle cell anemia so let us have a look so normally in blood cells in blood we have different types of cells like we have rbc we have wbc and platelets rbc are red blades uh, red blood cells wbc are white blood cells and platelets are also called as thrombocyte so actually yesterday didn't came up with analysis because uh, my dude my son is suffering from severe fever and he is having hemolysis and the platelet count is more than 8 lakh so normally it should be like maximum is 4 lakh it had been increased to 8 lakh so because of that we admitted him in hospital and he is having like fever spikes so even though i'm here to take the analysis you can understand my consistency yes so consistency is very important and if you want to achieve anything consistency is the key so try to prepare and do hard work and be consistent and be honest in your preparation so that you can achieve your goal okay so if you are talking about rbc rbc life span is normally 120 days and they are in disc shape like this the shape of this rbc is like this but what happens in this sickle cell anemia is so this disc shape disc shape of rbc is converted into this sickle shape okay so because of this sickle shape what happens let us take this is blood vessel so normally blood will be moving like this so there will be no disturbance to the wall of this blood vessels 
but what happen whenever this sickle shaped cells are moving so they will cause damage to the blood vessel in the layer of the blood vessel okay and actually this rbc will be carrying hemoglobin so hemoglobin is very important component because hemoglobin will be transporting oxygen to the different body cells and in the sickle cell blood cells so they will be decreased hemoglobin carrying capacity so that the cells will not be releasing uh, receiving enough oxygen which is required from this blood so this is a thing which mainly happens and i can say it is one of the genetic disorder okay sickle cell anemia so this article says that here in india we came up with a new drug that is going to treat this sickle cell anemia okay so this is the thing that you have to think okay now let us move on to next topic it is about one crore registrations for rooftop solar scheme says our prime minister so this article it is talking about one important scheme and already we discussed this topic number of times there is our prime minister posted that over 1 crore households they have registered for a scheme that offers enhanced subsidies and loans to eligible households to install this roof top solar systems so what is this scheme called as pm surya ghar muft bijli yojana that is pm solar roof top free electricity scheme okay so there is a high chance of getting this scheme in your prelims so whenever you are seeing any scheme which is seen in you so there there will be high chance because every year you will be getting two to three questions in your prelims so from that point of view this article is very important and now let us move on to next page so here you can see like different different images so these are like idols of azagu mutu azgar siddha temple and you have to see like where there is located where they are located and if you move on to this faq page so there is one article regarding agni 5 and we have to focus on this what is this mirv technology so here there is a question like uh, there will be a question like what is this mission divyastra okay what is this mission divyastra and you may also get question like m i r v so what is this technology what it is related to okay so from this area you can get a question and already we discussed this topic okay you have to see this so m i r v is nothing but multiple inter independently targetable re entry vehicle okay so actually recently agni 5 has been tested with this m i r v technology by this d r d o and it is under this mission divyastra okay so this is the thing and this mirv technology is related to single missile that can deliver multiple nuclear warheads that is this mirv technology so you have to remember this for sure and next topic it is about caa that is citizenship amendment act and number of times we had discussions on this topic so we are not going to have the discussions on this topic today okay and in the science page you can see one important topic so here i hope you can see the small article with rod shaped bacteria so this shape is called as rod shaped and this back this is the bacteria that is rod shaped bacteria so actually uh, in our diet so normally we will be taking non veg and today is sunday so many of you having this non veg diet right yes non veg and we will be taking veg also so in which we have dal we will be having even leafy vegetables right yes or no so everyone will be having leafy vegetables at least twice or thrice in a week so normally we will be having like every day we will be having this leafy vegetables in our diet because it is having fiber content but here one important thing that you have to remember is so in this leafy vegetables we have cellulose so normally we can see like herbivores herbivores like goat sheep cow etc so they will be eating only this plants or plants based material like fodder so actually earlier we we thought that this leaves your contain this cellulose okay cellulose cellulose 
it is only digested by this cellulase enzyme cellulose it is present in this leafy vegetables it is digested only by the cellulase so we thought that this cellulase which is only present in herbivores it is not present in man or humans but recently one study says that cellulose degrading bacteria is also present in our human gut that is in intestine of humans so that without fear we can take as many leafy vegetables as possible so try to incorporate leafy vegetables in your diet because it is having folic acid and it's also having a capability to improve your blood also so even if you are talking about pregnant women so for pregnant women in the diet there should be completely at least one bowl of leafy vegetable should be there so that they will be getting enough folic acid and as well as they will be producing enough hemoglobin also yeah this is one important topic and if you see like other topics so it is about oral cancer you may not get question from that area and next one is starlet sea anemones so you have to see some facts regarding this starlet sea anemones use a neurotoxin to deter a predator okay so they are using toxins so that it can fly away from this predator okay so these are the important topics which appeared in our today's hindu newspaper so i covered both today's and yesterday's newspaper within this time okay so there are very less article unfortunately so even though yesterday i missed this uh, analysis so i covered this within the normal time so that's all for today i hope you enjoyed this lecture so if you like the last class and please hit the like button and don't forget to hit the like button and please do share this class to your friends and one more thing is do subscribe to rathor science academy and if you want to have the personal mentorship and you can come to the offline branch which is present in ashoknagar and it is at a pillar number 369 is steel bridge okay it is in third and fourth floor so you can come and you can contact me so thank you so much for watching